Is Adobe Firefly the future of graphic design? I know it's another AI video. I have to do it because it's Adobe that's doing it this time. Not just these other companies like OpenAI and Midjourney, but Adobe have created their own generative AI. If you've been living under a rock, generative AI is where you literally type in what you want to see and it will produce that. But there's been some controversy lately. The way that AI works normally takes other people's works online and people think that's stealing no matter where you stand on that that is what's happening this is what the companies are doing they are taking the works of other people and sort of mashing them together obviously this has led to a lot of creative professionals one not liking that two not using it and demonizing people who do use it and three making all creative professionals question whether we'll have a job to go to in the next few years. Adobe seem to be trying to put an end to this by giving their own take on what generative AI is. Adobe Firefly is in beta at the moment, but the big caveat is that it uses licensed images as its data modeling. So it doesn't take anyone else's work. It takes images that it's allowed to use that's been licensed to them. So the end result of what you get is fully licensed. Let me show you. Okay, first of all, let's go to the text to image. Let me show you this. This is some examples. They look pretty cool. That guy looks super cute. I like this koala. Let's try this prompt. So we can try the prompt and it will generate a few images for us to select. That was pretty quick as well. But not only that, we can write whatever we want in down here and we can start to add more information in. Adobe have actually added this sort of UI where you can change things such as instead of making it the way it is now, we could make it more into a photograph. And you'll see down here at the bottom left that it's added a sort of tag to it to allow you to quickly change and edit what you've written as the prompt so now it's changed it to a photograph which is pretty cool what about if we go like you know synth wave and then generate that there you go we've got a lot of synth wave you know neon happening here that's really cool let's have a look to be fair that was surprisingly quick as well we can even change the lighting so we go to let's do studio lighting composition let's do close up oh no blurry background that's what we want a blurry background color and tone vibrant press generate and down here at the bottom left we can clear all the styles so instead of having to type in the styles individually you can actually just get rid of them by the tags now there's not much different right now which is a bit disappointing but it is ai so i can't blame it too much now all the images that you're seeing here are generated by its own licensed images from adobe stock let's type in something crazy crazy man reading a book on the moon now that prompt has nothing to do with me in graphic design but it seemed interesting so there we go we've got a man reading a book on the moon i don't understand why all these chairs are there it's showing a picture of the moon but it's not showing him on the moon but they don't look too bad look at this that doesn't look too bad at all but when we say we want to go for i don't know like digital none it will generate them again some of these look pretty cool we've got synthwave still on so we'll just get rid of synthwave for a second and go through it the actual ui is a lot better you feel a lot easier writing what you want more of a layperson could go ahead and just prompt this in there you go we're getting some crazy styles look at that style it looks so strange it looks like 3d models and the hands don't look too bad something that i could use ai for for instance is creating assets for my project and I know last time a lot of you guys didn't understand what I was creating and it was taken very much out of context hilariously but for example if I wanted to create an illustration of a graphic designer working at his desk with an orange background I could use that in many places I could use that in my email newsletter header I could just use that for a client project to show it in the background of some work that I've done without having to search the internet all day an illustration of a graphic designer working on his laptop with an orange background background we'll call that a graphic and there we go we've got this and that's done a pretty decent job that's done better than some would say in mid journey or in even in Dale. it's given me that illustrative file what if i wanted to do a photograph though this might get a bit crazier or a bit weirder that is definitely not a photograph oh, it's because i've written illustration in there here's the photograph and you can see it works a graphic designer working on his laptop with an orange background and even though i put his it's actually created a female version too i can tell you now that that in itself is pretty good that's all from licensed images i would never really use the photography ones or the photographic ones the ones that look too real i would use the illustrative ones but that's not the most exciting part of adobe firefly 
for me anyway. For me, the most exciting part is the text effects one. This is where they're really unique. We go in here and these are all generated by Adobe Firefly with licensed images. Let's try this hairy monster prompt. I don't even know what this prompt is. So what happens is with this text one, you can write the words that you want and give it a prompt and it will layer over the text. But the coolest part of it is you can choose how loosely fitting it is. It's not perfect, but it works. I'm a typography fanatic. I'm obsessed with type design and being able to see this happen so fast without having to use any 3D software because normally we would use 3D software to render out things like this to make it look cool. Maybe Adobe Dimension, Blender, Cinema 4D, you would have to use all those apps. But no, Adobe Firefly allows you to see an image of it. Not only that, we can change which ones we see. So we can do this and it will generate all the different ones, change the background. This is a really cool demo. Let's go for like, I don't know, um, blue water splash with, you know, let's just do it with the white background, blue water splash and do it loosely. Give it a sec. Oh, that's a bit strange. You can see it's trying its best. It kind of looks like toilet cleaner though, because it's so blue. <laughs> here we go. I think we've got a winner here. This might work better, but the bit of editing in Photoshop that would work so well. Then we can just change the water here. So we can just say splash. In fact, I'll just do it in all caps. It would be better. It'll be so much better. And there you go. Like that is actually pretty decent. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried mid journey to do text effects in it. It's very difficult because it doesn't understand text effects. This is completely unique and it's using licensed images but the question that we as designers all have on our mind is whether this technology is going to overtake or replace us and i've been having comments of people who sound very sure that it will. However, in my opinion, I don't believe so. The reason being is because AI isn't inherently creative. It just takes it from a data set. We are as humans creative and we do take all our creativity from a data set as well, but it doesn't experience the same things in life as us. It doesn't know what emotions feel like. It doesn't know what it feels like to, I don't know, get that client project done, the euphoria of that, or the feeling of being rejected, the feeling of feeling loved, the feeling of feeling, the feeling of hunger, the feeling of like being full. It doesn't get those things inherently. You just tell it what to feel. And because of that, I don't believe AI can ever fully replace designers. Now, the strange thing is we're starting to talk about this replacing us, even though companies are already replacing graphic designers anyway. Companies like Canva making it so much easier for people to create logos, to create any sort of branding material for their Instagram pages or marketing. You've got companies that allow websites just to be designed by anyone now, and no one seems to be complaining about that, even though that's what's really replacing graphic designers, the ability to not show their value or to be valued by the layperson or the person who needs them. But before I go into this even more, I just want to thank the sponsor of this video, FreshBooks. There's a lot to love about being your own boss, but trying to figure out your financials on your own or becoming an overnight accountant isn't one of those things. Luckily, there's FreshBooks, the all-in-one easy to use accounting solution that's built for business owners like you. FreshBooks is an easy to use accounting and invoicing software that makes it simple to send invoices, receive payments. Plus, it keeps your income and expenses organized so you won't be begging your accountant the day before your taxes are due. It has everything you need to manage your books, like invoicing, expense and time tracking, automated payments and reports that tell you just how healthy your business is. And right now, there's a brand new offer just for subscribers of the channel. So head over to the link in the description to get a massive 90% off your FreshBook subscription for four months. Thanks for sponsoring. Obviously, I can't curb anyone's fears on AI, but what I can tell you is that looking at this AI today, this is a lot more, as people say, ethical. I believe this to be something that you could use to gain inspiration for your work and not to just use the output. Using it as a tool to understand maybe compositions more or to get a certain illustrative style. Or even for this, I could take the A from this splash and I could trace around it and create a really unique looking A that looks like it's got water forming around it. So my opinion, I don't worry too much about AI. I know the value that graphic design has and as AI becomes even more explosive in popularity, if it does become more explosive in popularity, that is, then that will only help value people 
more who do it themselves. People want that human connection. But I'm interested to know what you guys think of Adobe Firefly. Does it make you feel better? Do you feel a bit more relieved that it's not taking your work and putting it out there online for other people to see, mess around with or use? Or are you like me where you think that that happens anyway with people? If your work's online, people see it and they'll use it. If you enjoyed the video, press the subscribe button and check out this video here. It's pretty good. I think you'll like it.